So the question is, um, if I have a function, in this example, f of x equals 2x, and I'm using projections onto this orthonormal basis, orthonormal system, um, to determine its Fourier cosine series on the interval from 0 to 2 pi, how do I go from the coefficients to the representation that we see in the series down at the bottom of the page? Right? How do we make, connect those dots? Um, so Brian, let me start by asking you, um, if I wanted to project our function f of x onto the first element of this basis, psi 0, um, how do I do it? Or what did you do to get this process started? Mm -hmm. of, uh, I don't know what that second re could read thing is. Psi. Yeah, psi, psi zero. Mm -hmm. And then go f of x. Uh -huh. Multiplied by? Uh, I think this might be the point where. Yeah. Yeah, right. So when, in order to project f of x onto the function psi zero, what we need is to take the inner product of f with psi zero and then multiply it by psi zero. In principle, when we project onto a function, we also have this denominator. So what happens with that denominator in this problem? Why is it one? Yeah. So the fact that this is an orthonormal system, if you take me at my word when I say that it's an orthonormal system, and you should never take me at my word, you should verify, um, but whether you do or you don't, you will find that that's equal to 1. Um, and if you want the verification, just take the integral from 0 to pi of the square root of 1 over pi uh, squared dx. That's what you would get just by multiplying phi 0 by itself and taking the integral from 0 to pi. Uh, we do, in fact, get 1 for the value of that integral. So we don't need to see the denominator there if we don't uh, want to. But it is secretly lurking there as division by 1. OK, so then you go through and you compute this inner product. Brian, did you get a, a result for that inner product? I think you might be reading ahead. If we're, I'm just looking at psi 0 here for a second. I think you're talking about psi n. Oh, maybe. Um, well, for the integral itself, it's the integral from 0 to pi mm -hmm. of the square root of 2 over pi square cosine root. n x times 2x. I think you're still looking at psi n there uh, in that example. But I agree with you for psi n. That's what we end up with. So let me record that on the next line. Psi n with f then multiplied by psi n. You said for the integral itself, we end up with the integral from 0 to pi of oh, f of x, which is 2x, cosine of nx dx, right? Um, but then for psi 0, uh, oops, I'm missing something. I'm missing the square root of 2 over pi. Square root of 2 over pi, cosine nx dx, there we go. Um, and for psi 0, instead of radical 2 over pi cosine of nx, we just get radical 1 over pi, the constant, uh, times 2x uh, with respect to x. So computing the coefficients in this problem comes down to just computing t these two integrals. Um, what did you get for the value of this first integral? Let me make that a question for everyone. For this integral sub psi 0 inner product with f, what did you end up with here? Uh, yeah, just the final answer for this integral. Pi. You got pi. Uh, I don't think that the integral comes out to pi, actually. Uh, at least I didn't think it did. Uh, let me run this one more time here. So if we took the antiderivative, what's an antiderivative for 2x? Uh, x squared over 2 times 2 in front. So we just end up with x squared evaluated from 0 to pi. Uh, when we plug in a 0 for x, we get 0. So the only non-zero entry in this difference is going to be when we plug in a pi. So I'm going to get square root of 1 over pi times pi squared. So we'll get something that looks like this, pi squared over radical pi. Um, or I think I saw some of you in this just simplify to use a rational exponent. 2 minus 1 half, what's that, 3 halves? 
the value of that integral ends up being pi to the power of 3 halves. Um, but I want to return to the point that Heather just made. Um, so if this integral evaluates to pi to the 3 halves, where are you getting plain old pi from? What am I missing? What factor haven't I included yet? Yeah, exactly. Right. I'm, I've, I've forgotten so far that I find this projection coefficient, but the projection itself is not the coefficient. It's the coefficient multiplied by the basis function. And the basis function here is the constant square root of 1 over pi. So all told, the projection itself is equal to the coefficient, which we said was pi to the 3 halves, multiplied by the basis function, which is the square root of 1 over pi. And from there, we can reduce the powers of pi to give me just pi to the 1. So the projection of the function f of x equals 2x onto the basis function psi 0 of x equals radical 1 over pi, so the constant basis function in this Fourier cosine basis, the projection itself is the constant function pi. And so where I've sort of given you some space at the bottom of the page to begin building the Fourier cosine series for your answer, the first of those boxes is the box for the constant function in it. So in other words, the Fourier series for f of x will therefore begin sort of in this first box here with the function, the constant function pi. And then the other trick, and I have to apologize for being um, intentionally a little bit devious here, because one of the points I'm trying to make with this problem is that when we sort of get a little bit more accustomed to building Fourier series, we take a lot of the orthonormality for granted, and we never actually have to normalize the Fourier basis by hand once we start using those formulas that we become accustomed to using for computing Fourier coefficients. Um, and so for that reason, I'm kind of being a little bit jerkish and giving you this box in front of cosine of nx to fill in. And when it comes time to fill in this box, this box is going to have a couple of different things attached to it. And I'm not going to give the whole thing away, but I will say this. Um, what, what we're adding together here Each one of these building blocks inside of my sum, my, my cosine series, should be the projection of f onto cosine of nx. Projection of f onto cosine of nx. But the issue with the projection of f onto the cosine of nx is that cosine of nx is not unit norm. It's not been normalized. So what I really should say is that this is supposed to be the projection of f onto the normalized version of cosine of nx, which also includes that square root of 2 over pi in it. So here's what I'll say, not to give the whole thing away. Um, but the projection itself, you're going to end up with that factor of square root of 2 pi showing up twice, square root of 2 over pi showing up twice. It shows up once inside of the integral that gives you the projection coefficient. It shows up there as part of the psi n, which is being paired with f to find the inner product. But then it shows up a second time because we have to multiply that coefficient by the basis function to get the projection. Um, and so when all of the dust settles, what happens? We have a 2 over pi square root from here. We have another 2 over pi square root from here. We could, if we were so inclined, see that as the square root of 2 over pi times the square root of 2 over pi, which is 2 over pi, coming out once and giving us inside the integral just 2x cosine of nx. And this is the kind of formula that we're used to using now in the latter part of the course to find Fourier cosine coefficients. So the reason for that 2 over pi in the formula that you're used to using for a Fourier cosine series is because of this normalization constant square root of 2 over pi showing up twice in the projection of f onto psi n. And so when it comes time to fill in this box, that box does get filled in with, uh, because cosine of nx is the only thing in front of it, it gets filled in with um, 
square root of 2 over pi times the projection coefficient that we get.